So here we have a piece of failed Ryobi technology. This was, this is a P250 cordless drill. Now, it's an auto shift, so it's got no shift knob. It just has power and speed, which lights up, and it is supposed to automatically shift from high to low. So, let's put our battery. It's focused. It'll start on speed, and if you add a load to it, it's supposed to shift to power. However, it's broken and doesn't shift to power, and it's a really heavy drill. This one's much lighter, slimmer. I'm not sure what the auto shift does inside, but this drill is much lighter. This one's the P271, which came out after this one. So the auto shift never took off for good reason. So I'm gonna take this apart and see how the auto shift mechanism works. I probably am not gonna to try to fix it because what's the point in fixing a drill which is heavy and awkward and didn't work well when it was new? So this is mostly just out of curiosity about what's inside here. Switch a switch. But anyways, I'm on low speed mode. I can shift it to high. However, in low, See, there's a clutch in there that's just slipping. So, on low speed. So, let's see if we can see what it has inside for clutches. So I haven't quite figured out how this is supposed to work. I think it's supposed to ride up and down these ramps. And when there's torque applied. Because this is the ring gear here. So I would apply torque when there's a lot of force so I would assume that that would do something and auto shift it. So it slides up and then oh, this would... So I figured out how this works. When the trigger is pulled it automatically shifts into high. So now we're in high by pulling this back, that's our shift lever, just like in a regular drill, except for it's pointing down instead of up. Now, it gets pulled back via this little rod with a hook on the end. Let's see, let's get the better lighting. There's no good lighting. So, oh yeah, there we go. So there's a little rod with a hook on the end that's pulling on this shift bar and that gets pulled when you pull the trigger like so now we're in high speed because this is back I let go it moves forward into low speed now this part here this fork is attached to that ring gear um, the outer ring gear so that slides off to the side when a lot of torque is applied to it and when that slides off to the side it allows this to pop back. So if I pull it, get us into. Now we are in high speed. We apply a lot of torque. That ring gear, and now it switches to high speed or to low speed. And now I'm stuck in low speed until I release the trigger. That comes back, and now I'm in high speed, apply a lot of torque, that slides over, we shift, now we're in low speed. That's a pretty neat, neat mechanism. Now, I can't figure out why the clutch inside is slipping, so I'm going to take apart this up further, because it seems like it's okay back here, so I'm going to try taking it apart just before the drill head and hopefully no pieces come flying out. So here's another one way roller. Let's see which way will it turn. So no 
don't know if I think this one's probably the truck lock because it's in closer. The other one might be just to help it with shifting somehow. Anyways, I don't know what the other one's for. But it has two in here. And I need to find the last ball for there because these fell out and went somewhere. I don't think it went too far. got the drill and the vise so I can show you the shift mechanism working. When the trigger is pulled, it pulls back on this spring here, which pulls back on that collar. So I'm going to jam just a piece of wood in there to simulate holding the trigger because the actual trigger switch now is over here because the case is taken apart. And since I don't have enough hands, I have a piece of wood. You can see right here, this is a little hook that gets pulled back by the trigger. And actually this is now not in gear. It's not all the way back. But if I give it a little blip, now we are in gear. And we are in high speed. And if I put some resistance on this, if you see this come moving over, moves over, then clicks. And now it's shifted, this is shifted forward. So that should be low speed, which is something about low speed is broken in the drill. So if I un let go of the trigger, um, that kicks back, but pull the trigger again. Now I'm in high speed again, and we can go reverse, go the other way. Oh, yeah, now we'll loosen up the chuck. See, that's pushing this lever away. It clicks, and now we're supposed to be in low speed, but like I said, low speed seems to be broken. I believe I found what's going on with this. This little switch here engages and disengages a locking system for one of the ring gears. So it seems like if I engage that, yeah, I actually get the torque out of high speed. So, but as soon as I release this, I don't. So and it only goes one way. Yeah, there. Now if I switch directions, that's gonna release. And it slips again until I slide it over, then it locks in. So, somehow this little doohickey is not getting engaged like it should. It looks like that would get engaged by the forward reverse switch. So maybe I'll check that out. So for the two lights here on top, they're labeled speed and power. If I, they're just run off this little light sensor here. And that really should be speed and torque, if you're being technically correct, because power takes into account speed. So with the gearing, assuming similar gear losses, both settings would put out the same amount of power but one would put out more torque and one would put out more RPM, but they should have a similar power. So, but that's all done just by a light sensor there. So I kind of figured out what's wrong with the, the drill. If you just go a little bit over with the switch, with the direction switch, it doesn't engage the locking mechanism for one of the later um, ring gears. So if I go down now, so I've got pushed over, then I release it a little bit. Make sure I can still drive. So 
So I'm high speed now. And when I switch to low speed, now it's a neutral. But if I push that over, it's it locks in and goes. So if you have one of these auto shift drills that's not auto shifting, it could be the need to push this the direction switch over more. But let me just run this in again and we can watch it auto shift. So got the direction switch pushed all the way over. Make sure it's gonna engage and here we go. Yeah. And switch nice and smooth. And there we are. So it works just like it was supposed to. Now it's slipping again, but a little bit engagement on that direction thing, and now it's working just fine. So I don't know exactly how the gearbox works in here as far as which planet drives which system and which one's rotating and which one's free, but um, the direction switch does matter for, for making sure that the screw gets driven in all the way. Let's do that one more time. Just get it started. So pushed over. In and go. So speed, which is the power. Fairly seamlessly.